Good morning, and welcome to New Life in Christ Ministries. We're so glad you joined us this morning, those that are here and those that are viewing us online. We are located at 895 North Delcy Drive in Malaga, New Jersey, where our pastor is the Honorable Bishop James E. Simmons, Jr., along with his wife, Minister Cynthia Simmons. At this time, we want to just thank you in advance for all your financial support you've been doing here at New Life. We thank the, those of you that just come out in person, and we appreciate those of you that are viewing us online. At this time, let us go to the throne of God in prayer. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to bless your name. For you and you alone are worthy of all the praises. So we say thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for your goodness and your loving kindness towards us. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for your son, Jesus, how he gave his life that we might have a right to the tree of life. And then, Jesus, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that will lead and guide us into all truth and righteousness. We give your name praise, Father. Now we intercede for Israel, your chosen people, that their eyes be open, their understanding enlightened, that they may know and receive Jesus, who is their true Messiah, and all Israel shall be saved because of our obedience to pray for them. Now, Father, we pray for the countries all over the world, and especially we pray for the United States of America, Father. We pray for the president that's exiting. We pray for the president that's making his entry, oh, Father. We pray for a peaceful transition in the precious name of Jesus. We pray for all the people in the United States of America. We don't all have to love one another, but we should be in agreement with one another. In the name of Jesus, that there will be peace throughout this land. Then, Father, we pray for all our unsaved loved ones, those that we know to be unsaved, those that we don't know. We intercede for them right now in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray for the sick and the shut-in everywhere. I know we're dealing with this pandemic, but there are other illnesses also, Father. And we're interceding for each and every one, Father. And you know their needs, Father. And we just say, let your will be done, oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. We pray for our children today, those that are trying to continue and further their education, Lord. We pray for their little hearts and their minds, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know that you see and you know all about them as well. We pray for the parents and the caregivers, oh God, that have to deal with them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all those, oh God, who are doing their part that we may stay safe in this season, oh God. Even as we approach our holidays, help us, give us the mind and know-how to continue to be safe in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for our pastor right here at New Life in Christ Ministry. We thank you for his wife. We pray that you'll continue to give him a vision, oh God, that we the people may not perish. Help us, the people, to be that provision, oh God, to work with him in the precious name of Jesus. We don't want to talk love. We want to show love, oh God, because you are love, and we say you are in us, oh God, so we want to show that love in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank and praise you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our scripture by Sister D. Reed, and she will be reading Psalms 67 for us. Good morning, everyone. I shall read the Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah that thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge your people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth, Selah. Let all the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us in all the and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you, Sister D. Let all the ends of the earth praise ye the Lord. That's what it's all about, I believe. That's why you're out here this morning, because you want to praise the Lord with other believers. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, we're going to give you a treat. We're going to hear from our devotional team. Amen. We missed that. So today, under the direction of Minister Wesley Simmons, we're going to hear from our praise team. God bless you. Can we just put our hands together and give God praise this morning? Hallelujah. He's truly worthy of all glory and all honor. Father, we worship you. We give your name praise. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. The song is simply called Hallelujah. Said we have come, we have to, come give you praise, to give you praise, holy one, holy one ancient of days. Ancient of Said we have come, we have come in victory, in victory, filled with love, filled with love and liberty. And Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the king you said, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Then we have come to give you praise for only one ancient of days. We have come, we have come, the victory, and victory, filled with love, filled with love and liberty. And liberty. Say, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the king. You say, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give you the highest hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Give you the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise, all praise is to the King of and the Lord. And the Lord God. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. One more time, all praise. Come on, the parents, hallelujah. Put 
your hands together. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. We serve a mighty God. We give you the highest praise. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. You are all praise. to God. We have a beautiful speaker on this morning in the person of Elder Freddie Alexander Sr. He's going to come after his daughter has come and blessed us with a solo. I just want to do my part right now so you won't have to see me up here anymore this morning, okay? So I'm going to introduce Elder Fred. This young man, I've known him, seems like forever. He's like a brother, you know, I've seen him through the good and the bad, the ugly, and back to the good again. This is a man of God who I appreciate very much. And what I like about you, Elder Fred, you never forget the seniors. Not that I'm a senior, but you never forget the seniors. You always manage to mention and thank God for the senior. So that's a beautiful thing. This man is full of the word of God, and he don't mind sharing it whenever however and whoever he can share it with so as soon as missionary cheryl stevens finished with her solo the next voice you will hear will be elder freddie alexander and this young lady his daughter she's just a little songbird she's my own personal songbird so missionary cheryl stevens come on with your lovely self right now and sing honey god bless you Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Can you only imagine? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance in your presence or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? Can you only Imagine, can you only imagine? I can only imagine what it would be like. When I walk by your side, I could only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. 
I could only imagine. I could only imagine to be surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance in your presence? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. I could only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I could only imagine when all I will do is forever. Ever worship you, I could only imagine. I could only imagine. Surrounded by Yes, 
tongue I could only imagine Yes, I could only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? your holy name, God. If we can only imagine, Father God, of all the stuff that we took you through, God, and you still loved us anyway. Father God, anything I said or did, I ask you to forgive me right now, Lord, and use me the way you desire, Father. Let me stand back and let the Holy Spirit take over. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Father God, and bless those that hear your word. Whether they hear or online or on TV, whatever we on on streaming, God. But let us be able to speak to somebody. Somehow, some way through your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's good to see y'all and good to be seen. Thank the Lord. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, Jesus. All I want to do is praise him. All I want to do is lift up his holy name. When I think back a month ago, Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Just to understand, you didn't see me here on my preaching time last month. Not because I didn't want to be. Not because I could be. But I was sick. I was getting over sickness. You see, I was like old country boy. I went to the doctor, had a biopsy, and the biopsy messed me. I done had it before, but this time it messed with me. It threw me for a loop, and I didn't know. I'm just sitting home, taking my bionics and stuff, thinking I'm getting better. But my wife's talking to me saying, "Huh, something wrong with you. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm just a little sleepy. Because she sit there and she talk to me. I be sitting there watching TV with her. We watching TV. She talk to me. I'm <laughs> and they think, you know, my TV changed. The channel changed. I wake up. I see Westerns. You know, I don't watch Western, but she do. So anyway, I said something. I went for a whole week. And I called a doctor. Well, my sister told me to call the doctor. And I called the doctor. And they think, you know, I, the doctor told me, he said, well, you go to the uh, urgent care. And I went to urgent care and told the doctor what was going on. He gave me some mobile, uh, bionics and antibiotics and gave me some, uh, some ibuprofen, 600 milligram. And boy, 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 they work good. <laughs> I, 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 the doctor asked me, he said, uh, uh, is you going to take these pain pills? I said, doctor, you don't even know it. Count them. He said, huh? 
I said, "Cause what is going on already? It ain't gave me, ain't even gave me the problem, man. What you talking about?" I said, "Bad as I feel, I'm taking anything you give me." And sure enough, I did, and it brought me back. Thank God for His precious grace and His mercy. And I thought about it. I said, ain't "Nobody." I said, "God, all I want to do is just praise you, because once you go through something, you realize how good God is. You don't need nobody to tell you." And see, I thought I was like a rock of the brother. I thought I wouldn't get sick till I got old. I guess I'm old. <laughs> I reached 65, so I guess I hit that age, huh? So anyway, and, and I, well, I said, God, when I, if you let me get through this here, I said, I'm going to praise you. I said, I'm going to quit standing back and just letting, I'm going to praise you. I said, I'm going to give you the glory that due unto your name. I'm going to lift you up, oh, Heavenly Father, and I'm going to let people know how good you is. Even in the midst of the storm, he's still good. I thank God that I had somebody that I can look up to. Even as I was going through and didn't feel too good, but I still kept my mind stayed on him. I still wanted to try to read a little bit. I couldn't read a lot. Because every time I try to read, I look like I either went to sleep or it just got, went the wrong way. But thank God for his word. Thank God for my wife and my children and our prayer warriors. Because I'm back now. I'm standing tall and giving him the glory. Because he's worthy to be praised. And I tell you, I don't know, but that week was a rough week for me, Bishop. I remember, y'all ain't going to believe it, but I sit in there. I'm going to read the scripture to you. I'm reading it for a reason. I'm not coming out. That ain't going to be my message, but I'm just going to, y'all just bear with me. And, uh, okay, I had a mark and everything. Here we go. I'm going to read the scripture. I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm coming out of Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now thus said the Lord. That created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee and have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. When I went through the rivers, they shall not overflood thee. So whatever problems you got, whatever going on, he going to take us through it. And it say here, and when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Who say that? God said that. The flame, the water not going to mess with you, is not going to overflow you. So all your problems come, God's still going to help you if you look unto Jesus. But you got to look unto Jesus. You got to trust him. And as we do that, then he'll take care of it. We can walk through the fire. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. Y'all, look, this is the truth, too. I, you know, I'm not going to stand behind here and tell no kind of lie. I'm going to tell the truth. Now, let me say this here. Me, Cheryl, and my wife, <laughs> we sit out on the back porch about a month and a week ago. Maybe two weeks ago in that month. But we sit out there. And we was eating crabs. We said, okay, this is going to be the last day for our, last month for our crabs because we get crabs. They some crab eaters. I might cook them, but I just I eat them a little bit. So we eat them. And I'm sitting there with them, and they got water and all stuff and everything we got needed. And I, the mosquitoes started messing with them. Didn't mess with me. And Yes, I am. And nothing happened. But as I'm sitting there, they got the little stuff all on their arms and all on the legs, and I got the, the stuff burning. I, you know, the candle, the stuff burning around by us. So I just had to be sitting there, and all of a sudden, Cheryl starts talking about, oh, they still bite me. Me being the dad who I am, I'm going to put light another candle for her so she can be okay. I turns over to I'm sitting in the chair. We didn't get out, just turn over, because the chair had them, that time chair you could turn. I just swiveled over, got my... Spraka, lighten it. Next thing I know, I turn back, 
You okay, Cheryl? Everybody fine now. I'm sitting there. I said, don't y'all smell something burning? <laughs> I said, no. I said, yeah, it is something burning. I look down. There go my black pants jeans. It's on fire. <laughs> Nobody but God. And it's burning. I got a whole, it just burned all that. I mean, that's all gone. And my wife looked down. At the time, she was the fireman. Her hand muscle was water because she just stood it with her hand <laughs> and knocking it out. And she had all that water right in front of her. Sean finally told her, Mom, you got water. <laughs> she finally told her water, but she was doing it with her hand. And her hand didn't get burned. She, she, not, she taking care of her husband. God, you ain't your devil. You're not going to burn him up like that. And as I did it, believe it or not, not us. Nothing happened. Not a itch or nothing. Only thing I had was just a little pain to let me know that there was a fire down there. But other than that, it didn't get no blister. The skin did not change. And I looked. I said, nobody but God. He said, if I go through the fire, it won't burn me. So see, that's God's word. That's why you got to know the word of God. For when things happen, you can know what he did for you. So when I went through that, I'm like, the only thing you know, I said, God, but it could have been another pair of pants. It just ain't had to be this pair. You know, that's the pair I like the most. You know, because with a black pair of pants, you can wear a shirt with anything and go where you want to go. So now I had to go out and buy, Bishop, I had to go out and buy me another pair. I would have, thank God I was able to go. I thank God for that. I said, God, okay, I lost it. But guess what? You know I'm old country boy, so you know they ain't going to be gone. They're hanging out there on the, on, on the fence right now, but I'm going to cut them. When the summer comes, they'll be my shorts. <laughs> uh, you know, we know how to do that, you know. Back in the day, we used to have the shoes, you know, flap to you, talk to you as you're walking. Keep your foot up so it don't so it hurt nothing, you know. Everybody think you're marching, but here you are, you're trying to keep your foot because the flap coming out. You understand? But that's okay. But look what he did now. I got some new shoes. I can talk now. I can drive them. I thank him for what he did, even though that's why I, I say, that's why people say you don't want to rejoice in the Lord. You got to be crazy. You got to be crazy. You think I don't want to rejoice in the Lord to give him the glory that's due unto his name. I got all my children alive. Grandchildren is healthy. But, but our church is healthy. My mother is healthy, 86 years old. She might not be moving as fast, but I understand now. When I was a little young, my wife used to get mad at me because she said, how come you didn't open the door for your mama? Help your mama? I said, no, she okay. Yeah? I said, my mama okay because I always looked at her being young. I don't see my mom getting old. But now, I understand thinking this game. That's why, you see, I call upon the Lord for the elders. And, the, and that's why everybody got to realize you pray for the elders, and you got to pray for the pastors. You got to pray for the pastors, because if you don't pray for the pastors, you don't have a leader. Because Satan showed trying to come and get him. You see what's happening now. You see what's happening in the world today. 45 don't want 46. He's still trying to eliminate him. You know he can't do nothing with it, because after 45 come 46. You got to have it, no matter what happens. If not, you can't count right. So he got to have it. So it's going to happen. Might not happen as soon as we want, but it's going to happen. Believe me. They can talk all this talk they want, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You better be careful. You better still stay on your knees. Like that song said, I can only imagine. It was prayer and supplication that did what happened today. But you got to remember this here. Then we're going to go on. That they had, 45 had 70 million people. 70, put that in your brain. 70 million people voted for him. 70. Biden had 76 or five, uh, seven, seven. So just imagine that. That's 76 million people don't like you. 
I mean seven, I'm sorry. I don't want to give them too many. Down. But that's okay, because imagine what happened. Look what happened yesterday. They was all coming together. I mean, they were just, uh, they was like, uh, like the devil to me. They were just going crazy. Why, how would you be going crazy over a man? A man who is taking all your health care from you. A man who ain't give you one red cent, but the high people and the low people ain't got nothing. And you still sitting there praising him, talking about I don't care. Your mother dying, your cousin dying, your sister dying, your friends dying. Heck, some of them might have died, but they're still praising him. I say, well, all I look at in Jew, where God said, when well, God told Michael kick Satan out, when he told him to kick him out, there was still a third of the angels followed him. A third of them was up there with Jesus, with the Holy Ghost, with God. They still follow Satan. I ain't calling Trump Satan. I mentioned your name then. I ain't calling him Satan. But he got the spirit around him. And the people follow him just like that, just like a coat. But we got we don't have a coat, but we got Jesus. That's why we got to call on the name of Jesus. We got to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. If I could sing, I would sing. What is his name? That dude, the pastor Wright, where he said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I need a savior. Savior, savior, savior. I need a healer. Healer, healer, healer. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's who we got to call on. That's who you call on. Don't trust Satan. Don't trust the world. Trust Jesus. We got to call on him. Amen? I'm sorry, y'all, but I guess I just had all this in me. And it just, it's just coming out. I don't know if I'm going to get through the preaching, but that's okay. But I'm going to bring you some word. Out. My text is going to be rejoicing in the Lord. It's a very familiar text. We all read it. We all hear it. But I, I, when, I, when God, when I thought about I want to rejoice in him, I want to praise him, I want to lift up his holy name, I want to magnify him, I want to get closer to God, I want a closer walk with Jesus. I want to be able to be like John. I want to be able to lay in his bosom. I want to feel him. I want to know who he is through the word. I ain't ready to die yet, but I want to read it through the word. I want to walk like Christ. I want to talk like him. I want to be like him. I want to act like him. That's why I can't be me. I can't be Fred no more. I can't be Fred. My new name is Elder, so Elder means something. <laughs> Elder Fred, that's who I am. So if you give me a title, I got to walk like it. You're a minister, be a minister. You're a deacon, deacon, do the deaconess. Whatever title God give you, he will change your name, missionary, whatever it is. You got to walk in it. Act like it. Know who you're living for. You're not living for yourself no more. I'm living here now to live again. And for me to live again, I got to rejoice in the Lord. And the words say rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. <coughs> I, that's why I say, God, look what you did. Look what you did for me. I don't know what he did for you, but I know what he did for me. I know about that house. I know about having water that you got to pump, the pump to get the water. I know about picking cotton. How long did I know about it? I picked it. I mean, I was a little boy with my grandma, but I, hey, I did what I did. They, they brought everybody. If you can walk, you can work. They were bringing, <laughs> and you got to play. You got to pick. You had to do something. You got to do something. You got to you, they, look. Back then, it ain't like it is now. Oh, I, that's okay. Fifty years old, still living with mom. Oh, that's all right. I, that's my son. I got helping. No, get a job. Get to work. It's work out there. Sometimes it might not be what you want, 
but you take what God gives you, and if you take what he gives you, he'll bless you eventually. I know when I started on the highway, I started, believe it or not, I started in the kitchen at Lakeland Hospital, busting suds, making $3.19 an hour. Not that I'm bragging, but I'm done, thank God. And when I left, I was a mason on the highway, making $35 an hour. And but that's nobody but God. No a high school education, but I did it in the streets. I did what I did because I had to survive. And God still blessed. He blessed me. And when I had my back turned on God, he still blessed me. And as he wrapped his arm around me, and he showed me what I had to do, I realized that I can't keep trusting in myself because self ain't nothing but destruction. That's all I was doing. I was going down the road of destruction. But when I look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith, I gave him all the glory and all the honor. All God told my wife, just get him in here. And I'll take him for that. And that's just what happened. She got me in and God working it out. Nobody but God. And that's why I want to praise him. That's why I want to lift up his holy name. I want to give him all the glory and all the honor due unto him because God is truly blessing even in the midst of the storm. I, don't, I can still eat what I want to. I can thank God all my bills are paid. I owe no man nothing but to love him. I can go where I want to, but I can't go nowhere because of coronavirus. So I have to stay home. Now I want to go. I want to go to Georgia as well as Kentucky because my mother in Georgia and my brother in Kentucky. But I feel, but you guess what? You can't go even on as Thanksgiving with what's going on. Y'all better be wise of what's going around here. You got to be careful because one thing about it, you know everybody want to see your children. You want to see your family. But I guess what? If you do what they tell you to do right now, at least you won't be dead and gone. You'll be able to have a long and graceful holidays with your people again because this too will pass. But we got to be a shrewd and cunning steward over his storehouse. We got to keep the masses on. We got to keep our distance. We got to keep ourselves clean and washed. We got to make sure now that I, my hand ain't never been so clean in his life. But nowadays, I mean, I can't, if, some, if I go anywhere, I don't go because I have to. I go because I need to. And I come to church because I want to. And I go to the doctor because I need to go. But if it weren't for that, I'd be right in the house. And I, don't, I thank God because I don't have to worry. I don't worry. I don't mind being at home. But once in a while, me and the wife, we know we might go get a little, not bad, but a little test at each other. And then I said, girl, open the door and let the sound in. Because <laughs> I said, we've been closed up too long. So that's how I open the doors up and the sun come in and read some word. And next thing you know, we back in love again and going on and doing what we have to do. I thank God for it because I got a read and a, I got a wife that like to read and praise God. That's all she want to do is read and praise God all the time. Now she me, Bishop. She, now I was by myself, now she me. Every time I turn around, she got, especially Sunday school. Y'all know I'm a Sunday school man. I love Sunday school. And I look around sometimes, I ain't got my Sunday school lesson, lesson read yet. I got a special thing, you know, I got that I work out. I'm looking up now, I had it on, on Sunday, you know, football, so I watch a little football now. But here she is doing the Sunday. I said, what are you doing? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I said, close that book. You can't be getting ahead of me, but I'll be messing with her. I'll be just messing with her, though, you know, because God is good. I thank God she want to read. I thank God that she want to want to pray. I mean, we get up in the morning, can't even get out of bed good. Let's, okay, let's pray then. You know, well, you know it take a long time. You know, I'm like, now I'm a Model T Ford now. My racing car days is over. <laughs> now I got to crank it up. <laughs> get out to bed. When we finally get out, okay, then let's, let's, let's pray then. Get a little coffee, and that's what we do. Yes. And let your moderation be known unto all men. 
The Lord is at hand. That's, we had to forsake not to assemble yourself together. That's what that was in Hebrew 10, 25, so that you'll know what's going on. Just like y'all here today, you know what's going on You because you want to receive the word from the Lord. You didn't have to be here. You didn't have to come here. But thank God that you had the desire to come here to praise the Lord and lift up his holy name. And you, a lot of times people come, they feeling bad. They feeling down. But as you hear somebody else's testimony or you hear a word from God, all of a sudden you start feeling better. I, I, it, it, it's nothing but the Holy Ghost. I, you know, I, my leg hurt, my left leg hurt sometimes. But when I come to church, I don't feel no pain. I don't feel nothing right now. When I'm doing what I'm doing, maybe I should stay. I ought to be like who was it? Stayed on the altar. <laughs> I should maybe stay up here because I mean, pain is gone. Because it's God having his way. Because God ain't going to let nobody stop his word. And say, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning her you. We got to know through Jesus Christ. But we got to know that we got to give him thanks. We got to praise him. If you woke up this morning, praise him. If you're driving your car, praise him. If you're walking, praise him. If you're smelling, tasting, praise him. One thing about it, let me tell you this here. There are some folks who don't have a car. There are some who don't have a house. There's some that got flooded out. There's some that got burned. But guess what? That's what we are. We still intercess and prayer for them. You keep praying for them, God provides for them. You make a way out of no way. So then if God touch your heart, you see somebody touch your heart, don't say no, help them. Don't talk about them. Do the best you can. Maybe you don't have a $2. Maybe you don't have a 50 cent. Give them 25. Share with them. I always look at it this way now. I used to be like, why would I give them people my money? They bummed. Why am I blah, blah, blah. give them my money I'm working hard for? They can get out there and get it. They want to do drugs and all that. But I look at it this way now. Whatever God give me, that's a blessing for me and the people. It's not just a blessing just for myself. So now if he can give me, he give me 90% of everything that I give him. Now, he give me 90%. I give him 10% of everything he give me. And out of the 10%, he rained down blessings that there's no room enough for us to receive. Nobody but God. Nobody. And then I can't help his people? If I can help him, I help him. And I, I, I used to say, God, I can't. But then he God let me know, you don't know what that person needs. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what went through what in their mind, what kind of agony that they're going through. You just do it. I just do it. God, if they're going to take it and do whatever, that's on them. I just do what the Holy Ghost tell me. And I, but I say this here. And the word say, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. That's why a lot of people keep on saying, oh, man, I got so much act. I got so much tragic. I got well, you ain't thinking on the goodness of Jesus. You're not reading his word. Because you're reading God's word. The word of God said 26 and 3 say, and uh, uh, Isaiah say, he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Why? Because you trust in him. You don't be trusted in your situation. You don't be trusted in people. But you trust him. And he will provide for you. That's why you have to keep yourself in perfect peace. And like he said in John 6, 27, that the peace I give to you, not as the world give, I give unto you. But in the world, you have tribulation, but be a good cheer, because he has overcome the world. That ain't nobody but God. We got to keep our eyes stayed on him. And he'll keep you in perfect peace. When I wake up in the morning, I say, God, one thing I say now, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us. I know I ain't the only one, but I'm just saying, I plead the blood. I, plead, I, I God, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody. Why? Because it's, not, it's the blood will save you. It's the blood will deliver you. 
It's the blood what will keep you. It's the blood that is our high tower, our comforter. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. And you're going to tell me I don't want to praise him. I don't want to lift him up. I don't want to call on his name. I tell you what, if it weren't for all this other stuff, I'd run it around. But I got to be obedient to the spirit. Thank you, Lord. You worthy, Father God. You worthy of all praise and all glory. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for letting this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. Ah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, mm, mm, mm. and whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. As a Christian, that's what we're supposed to be thinking. That's just like the fruit of the Spirit. We are supposed to be thinking about being honest to people. We shouldn't be telling lies because a lie brings another lie. And another lie bring another lie. So if you tell the truth, even though it hurts, but it's good because you tell the truth, it'll straighten everything. The word says, and the truth will set you free. And it will. I know. I'm telling you. I, was, I remember one time I was all tied up in my everything in a knot because you know, I don't want to tell you this to them and I don't want to. And I had to finally tell the truth and they tell you no Freedom was here. Nothing but freedom. So you got to tell the truth. And we have to understand whatsoever is pure and honest. You are pure people. In the word of God in Matthew said, those who are pure will see God. We're going to have to be pure when we see God face to face. It ain't going to be no kind of sin, no kind of nothing when we see Jesus. When we see Jesus, we'll be just like him. People will know who you are and whose you are. You know who you are. You know whose you are and where you're going. We're striving to be up in heaven. As I, I'm with Bishop, I'll tell you what, Bishop, I got I, I, I got still saying on that. I'm going to be just like him. I don't know. I think I want me an old red horse. I see me ride old red horse coming back. Coming back with Jesus. I can see him. I can see him looking back and saying, come on, Elder, get on up here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to know if you pass away, you go to a real life. You ain't got to worry about passing away. Physically, you will, but spiritually, we get a whole new body. And that's something. God going to give me three names. You too. He gave us one name was your name that your daddy gave you. Second name was the name you got when you come into the church, sister or brother. Third name, we don't know yet. Ain't nobody going to know. But he's going to give it to us when we get to heaven. And when we get that name, whoo, Jesus. Nobody. We be praising him. Be jumping up. You ain't got to worry about nobody telling you to get up. Jesus might be telling you, I wish y'all sit down for a minute. <laughs> but we'll be praising him, giving him all the glory and all the honor due unto his name. And I were going to go, but we're going we're gonna to skip. Y'all can go home and read this. We're going to skip right on down to 11 to 13. Then we'll get out your way. Amen. Now that I speak in respect to wants, not that I speak in respect of wants, but for I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, there will be content. You got to learn to be content in whatever state you're in. I, I understand. I ain't crazy. I know if, if, if your bills ain't paid, your car ain't running, a washing machine is dry, gone, basement flooded, you don't know where the next meal coming. 
I know you're thinking, but be content. Pray to God. Say, God, challenge him. God, I'm putting this in your hand. I'm taking it out of my hand, God, because every time I try to do something, it mess up. So I'm putting it in your hand, God, and you can handle it. The word of God in Matthew says, you don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to put on. Are you better than the lilies of the field? When she closed them, they, they're some beautiful. At summertime, they're the beautiful roses and flowers you can see. But later on, when that weather comes, they changes. They dry and swivel up. But we won't. We'll go on and get a whole new clothing. Amen. And now and know how to be a base and I know how to be a bound. A base means I know how to be poor. We know how to be poor. I already told you earlier. I know how. I know how to be poor. I didn't have to be poor, but my dad was not a steward and kind of steward over his storehouse because he had a good job. He was working at the Hayes, Inter Hayes International Airport, one of the biggest airports in, in the country. But he did what he did. My mom did what she did just to keep us surviving. She saved quarters and nickels and dimes. But he didn't know if she could feed us. <laughs> but we ate. She made sure we didn't have, she made sure she washed the clothes. We might have had one, two or three pair of pants, but she washed them. She washed them. Made sure her five children got had clothes. She made sure that we ate. We might not ate what we wanted, but we ate something. I used to love me some fat back and them old potatoes and some grit and some uh, and some uh, and some, uh, uh, grease. Oh yeah, bring them on. My beans and stuff. I'm right there. Yeah. I, that's right. I had it all. High cholesterol, high blood pressure. <laughs> but to God be the glory. Thinking that I'm still here. Nobody but him. Nobody but God that brought us to. My granddaddy was 95 years old when he died. He ate everything. Bacon and everything else. So when he died, I mean, he just kept eating all the day he died. But God be the glory. Ah, you know, I have to change my eating habits now. Because the things that the way things is and what we doing now. Got to change it. You don't change it, doctor say you go. I don't want to go yet. I want to go when God says time. When God says time to go, I want to go. But until then, I want to occupy until he comes. And give him all the glory and all the honor. And abound means I know how to be, how to have poverty. I mean, how to have prosperity. That means I know how to have. Thank God I don't get crazy over money. Money never excited me. I liked it. Matter of fact, I might have been a time I loved it. But now I know the love of money is the root of all evil. But at one time, that's what I did. But thank God that he brought me through. He brought me through the fire. Mm, mm, mm. Because of that, I know how to handle money. Money don't excite me no more. Don't, don't, don't worry, because you I said that. Oh, now, I don't think when I get off the pulpit, you go, oh, boy, bitch, give me, I mean, hell, give me a no. I got to be a shrewd and stood over his storehouse. I got to make sure I don't lose it all. But I still be able to use it for his purpose. Amen? Amen. And if you want it, get a job. Get your own. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, no. Nah, um, okay. All right, my, I guess my wife calls her rebuking me in the name of Jesus. But that's okay. That's all right. I give you. I give you what I can, but what I can't. And if I can't, I ain't going to worry about it. And it say, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. See, that's why people say, oh, because I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I believe, I'm, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm good. Okay, just keep being good. Because bad coming. 
Keep on being good. I mean, I don't want you to change. Keep on being good, though, because you're going to have a time where the bad going to come. And you got to still trust in God. No matter what happened, he just told us in his word, you're going to suffer a need. But you still got to trust in God. When I was going through, I didn't turn my back on God. Sometimes I felt like it. Matter of fact, I think one time I said, God, if you really take me home, take me home. That's not bad. But God said, no, not yet. But I just want to show you that you ain't as powerful as you think you is, Fred. I'm going to show you that you need me. Now, I'll let you go all these 65 years, but I want you to praise me. I want you to rejoice in me. I want you to show people who you are. Don't be ashamed. Just praise me. Lift up my name. Call on my name, Jesus. Call on my son. Let him know it's Jesus is the one. Jesus is the reason for the season. If it weren't for him, we couldn't be here. So we had to give him all the glory. We had to give him all the praise. He said, you do your part and everybody to do their part. Don't you look to the left, don't look to the right, but look unto the hill which cometh your help, which your help cometh from the Lord who make heaven and earth. See, we looking at the wrong people all the time. We think it's all about this is on the right, this is on the left, but oh, they're going to laugh at me, they're going to talk, forget y'all. Nobody but Jesus. As long as I do it decent in order and don't get crazy. If I get crazy, that means you got to call and call. And that's where I got to go. That means I got to get it back together. So that's why we have to make sure. The word of God said, make sure you do everything decent and in order. So when I say forget y'all, y'all know what I mean. I love you. I love you with all my heart. But forget you when I'm going to praise God. When it's time to lift him up and praise his name, if you don't want to get to him, forget the word say, as, I don't know that word, move out my way and let me praise him. Don't hinder me. I won't hinder you. If that's what you want to do, but as long as you do it decent in order, you know what the order is. We can't have people just coming in and getting crazy. We got to have the order. That's why you had to, when you had to give, that's why, believe it or not, people don't realize, that's why when you're born, the mother and father take care of you. Then, then when they take you to the babysitter or whatever, when they got to go to work, you know, you wake it up early in the morning. When you finish waking up, when you finally can wake up on your own, do what you want to do, clean your own self, do what you got to do, now you're going to school early in the morning. Why? Because you're training you how to get up early in the morning. And that's the same with us. We're here now training ourselves in the word of God. We're here now. We got to get in the word. Because greater he is in us than he is in the world. Jesus Christ is in us. And how he get in us is through this here Bible. That's how the Holy Ghost get into you. That's how you get to understand what's going on. That's how you get to understand what does say the Lord. That's how you know when you start reading something, God said, preach that. Teach that. Talk to somebody about that. You don't do it on your own. Every time I try to do something on my own, it fails. But when I give God the glory and say, God, okay, you got it. I had about five or six different type, type, <clears throat> titles and coming out of five or six different kind of books. And God said, what did I tell you from the beginning? I told you I want you to still rejoice in. I said, God, but everybody I do that. Do what I tell you. Don't do what you want. Do what he say. So if you're a preacher or whatever, and God give you something to preach, and somebody might just preach it last week, but if he give it to you, preach it. Because that means he got something different for to come out of you. Because you're a different vessel. You might be the same word, but something else going to come out. Because deep down inside, you got other stuff in you that God will raise up out. Because whatever goes in you, got to come out. So that's why we had to put the word. That's why I had to make sure we get God the glory. And Psalm 51, 51, 50 say, praise ye the Lord. Praise him with a 
loud sounding symbol, praise him with a high sounding symbol. Let everything praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor that due unto his name. I, Deaconess Mary don't know, but she read this morning. I said, listen to her. She read my closing. Read 150. I said, listen at her. A song. At one time, God gave me that to preach it. But I said, look at that. Look what's happening. But anyway, good to see y'all. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be heard. Thank God that I have a little bit of sickness, but that's okay. He said, you be here long enough, that ain't going to happen. But I thank God. And I thank God for all the mothers. All of them. Because they were the two we praise. See, people don't realize we glean from the mothers. The mother's the one who, they the one who do all the planning. Father ain't got no time. Father going on about his business, doing all the stuff, watching the game plan, do something. But the mother who the one is gleaning, and she, and when they get older, they still got wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Ain't that right, mother? Amen. So y'all, we got to listen to them. So we thank God for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. And thank for those who are listening. I pray I said something, and you got something out of it. Amen? Rejoice in the Lord again, I say rejoice. This is even, I, I believe that this is what makes the devil crazy. Because when the devil see you praising God, he loses it. He don't understand how can you still praise God in spite of. Amen. How could the three uh, Hebrew boys being thrown in the fiery furnace still praising? How could Daniel being thrown in the lion's den still praising? Amen. And how can we in this corona? Amen. I, I, I tell you what, church, I thank God that he has uh, spared us. I look at the different ones that I know God has spared us. And for those that had contracted, praise God, he took them through. And we're, we're just going to keep uh, holding him up. Every time I hear the numbers on CNN and, and MSNBC, I, you know, I just say, God, thank you. that you know I, I pray for those families, but I pray for us that we're not one of the numbers. Uh, different ones have went to jobs and people have had it. And they go to God, we're still okay. And I thank God for it. I thank God for you for that have come out. Praise God. And God bless your hearts. We're going to stand in dismissal in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do praise you. We thank you for the word. For you have indeed sent your word to heal us. We receive our healing by the word for all the different things. Thank you for Elder Alexander and how you've kept him steadfast, unmovable, and always to abound. Thank you for each and every one of us here today. And for God, we give you the praise. We thank you for those that are on the airways. We pray for them. We thank them, Lord of God, for their attentive, attentiveness. God, we bless your name. Now, we ask for those that are going through financial struggles. We're going to stretch our hand forth right now. God, you touch in that financial area. Oh, God, send deliverance in the name of Jesus. Those that are going through a physical situation, touch in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, we speak to those bodies, bodies be healed in the name of Jesus. Just like that woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, glory to God, I shall be healed. And we believe that we're touching and agreeing right now. God, we thank you today. We give you the praise. We give you the, the glory and the honor. We again pray for our young people. Keep their minds, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And let that same mind be in them that was in Christ Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of your Son, for this we give you the praise, we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, say this with me, if you will. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you 
and give you shalom, give you peace. Amen. Say this with me. With, if, with what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, pray, live holy, and love one another. Now go, go with God and go in peace. Go in peace and go with God. God bless our senior moments. Amen. God bless his people.